the garbage dump. There you see. The smoke begins. The smell begins. Since 1972, I did the, my first slum picture, and that got into trouble with the censors. They were banning it uh, because said it was too realistic. They would say, you know, your movies disturb. You know, we feel uncomfortable. I said, it's meant to be. Tondo has always stood for uh, the poor people of Manila. When you speak of poor man poverty, they usually refer to Tondo. Tondo is the major uh, district, and this is the heart of Tondo, you know. It's a slum area. The people uh, had paved streets here, and they have houses here, you know. Two stories, okay, you know, the houses were okay. Imelda had them evicted, and they bulldozed the place, and uh, they tried to flatten the garbage dump. So the people were relocated to a place where it was away from their source of incomes, you know. So the people were forced to go back here again and rebuild their shanties. What did they expect to find? You hear all kinds of up stories about somebody finding some diamonds and sometimes they find uh, gold and they find earrings and rings and all that. I made about five films here. I made in Xiang, Jaguar, Bona, Manila. I used to stay here month after month after month. People here are very nice. And, uh, that was the beginning of Imelda's uh, campaign again, showing what is not true, what is not good, and what is not beautiful, you know. She says, my job as a director is to be part of nation building. And uh, one of the first steps towards nation building is, is, is image building. <laughs> And uh, Imelda says, and it is not true what you show in your film, she says, about the people in Tondo being poor, she says. They're not poor. And of course, I was surprised about that. She says, what do you mean they're not poor? I said, my oh God. And she says, uh, it's your perception that is wrong. You go to Tondo and to prove that the people in Tondo are not poor, she says, when you go to Tondo, what do you see? Children smiling, everybody smiling. And she says, if they're smiling, that means they're not poor. They're rich in material spirit. They may be poor in material wealth. So what can you do? What, how can you argue with somebody who talks that way? Kikirampo. So I remember when I was here, I was filming Jaguar. Philip was running away from the policeman. He runs up to here, you know. So I had a shot of him here, going up here with the whole with uh, the skyline of Manila in the evening, you know, lights, and so you see it. In the time of Marcos, this was the killing fields. This is where the policemen would just let go of, you know, when they don't want to uh, make their arrest, they're usually made to climb up and they get shot there. So the bodies don't ever get discovered. So they say that this was the best uh, cemetery because they would shoot them and then the bulldozer would come in in the morning or in the evening, and we just sort of just keep on make them roll, and the people know it. This is an ideal place for hiding. It's because no hear, no talk, no see. I use that in Jaguar. What is the story of Jaguar? Jaguar is a story based on a very notorious gangland character, but the censors disapproved of the character being a notorious gangster, so I was forced to make it into a security guard. He became the bodyguard of a very rich man, and the rich man got involved in a murder. And uh, he takes the rap for it, you know. And so I have a scene where in Philip just burst out and starts strangling him. Of course, the police came, and then he beat him up and puts him back to jail. And my last scene is Philip inside, behind bars, and tears just falling down his cheeks. And Imelda was telling me, uh, I don't like your films because they're so hopeless, they're so pessimistic. And I said, then you didn't know how to watch my film. I told her. And I said, I'm not interested whether, for all I care, he probably will rot in jail. But the important thing I said about the film that I wanted to bring out is that 
for the first time, I said, he retaliates and he answers back the only way he knows how. I am not condoning violence. What I am trying to say is this inarticulate, illiterate, uneducated man who was used and victimized and exploited by uh, his employer, treated like a dog, I said, for the first time, I said, started to bark. I said, that probably is a beginning, the realization that he is not a dog, you know, that he is a human being entitled to certain dignities, you know. That was the important thing about it. So I said, you did not see that? And you know her answer? But how many of us intellectuals can see that point? And I said, you underestimate your people. Probably that's the difference. I said, I start uh, with the premise that they are intelligent. I said, they may not be intelligent in the sense that they went to school, but they have a basic common sense, I said, you know. To recognize certain values, you know. You know, have your films helped these people in any way? What do you mean in any way? What do the films do for them? It makes people who don't belong to this side uh, aware that there's another reality. And I felt that uh, the movies, uh, uh, through some of those films that I, I, I made, uh, uh, would confront the people with this issue, you know. I mean, so that uh, film does not just become a reflection, a medium that reflects uh, reality, but uh, that would confront these realities, confront the people with these realities, you know or those that are uh, in power, or those th that are concerned. And people should be concerned. How is the Okino government handling this? Well, they're confronting it also. Hopefully, you know, uh, this uh, President Aquino stated it, that uh, the uh, first problem that uh, uh, she has to solve is the economic poverty, you know, the living conditions of, uh, the subhuman conditions of these people. I mean, 80 percent, 75 to 80 percent of the people here in this country are below poverty line. And if this government, if it's going to be worth its salt, if it's going to be uh, effective at all, must first address itself to this problem of uh, poverty. Because it's, it's, it's senseless to keep on talking about structures of the government, you know. You can come out with the most idealized structure of the government and agencies and all, but if the people remain poor, then uh, these people would sell their va ballots, you know. They would sell their uh, rights to anybody who has money, which has always been our problem in the past, you know. Come election time, the candidates uh, would just dole out money, and these people would just uh, sell their votes, you know, and just add to the corruption and all, you know. These are uh, such easy praise and easy, uh, very vulnerable to, to that, because they're poor. Their main problem is three meals a day, you know.